My name's Karina Thompson and welcome to another episode in the series Getting Started with Digitising using the MySona Embroidery software. In this video I'm going to be introducing you to the Create Express Trace feature within the Express Design Wizard which is part of the Digitising module. If you're a subscriber or own your own copy of MySona or perhaps are just interested in finding out a bit more about digital embroidery software, why not subscribe to our free YouTube channel and that way you won't miss out on any of our future episodes. In this video I'm on a PC with the Platinum level of software installed. The principles are exactly the same if you're on a Mac. I've opened up the digitizing uh, module and the Express Design Wizard opens up. You might find it useful to watch my earlier film, Getting Started with Digitizing, How to Get Started, where I talk through how to use the Create and Express Embroidery feature. In this video today, I'm going to be talking about the Create Express Trace. So I'm going to click on that radio button. And straight away you can see that the um, icon here is suggesting you can see it's going to give me a linear version of my imagery. So I'm then going to click next and just like before it's going to say uh, 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 where's the picture coming from. In this case I'm going to load a picture but you might find it useful to watch that earlier film I've already mentioned about where I talk about these other features. So I'm going to click load a picture. Again I'm using the free downloadable samples from the download page of mysonet.com and today I'm going to be working with the pug. So I've clicked on her and I am then going to click OK. And as you can see I've got um, a, a, a cartoon style, clip art style image of a, a pug in here. Now the Express Design Wizard does work best with clear sort of high contrast images, cartoon style, clip art style imagery. Yes you can sometimes get good results with photographs um, but you might find it easier to use the photo stitch module if you are actually working with photographs. But my advice would be um, have a go working through the wizard and you'll get a, a feel for what your embroidery might look like very quickly. So I've loaded up my picture of my pug and then I am going to click next. Again I've talked about this screen I'm not going to uh, uh, crop or alter that image at all so again I'm going to click next. Now this is the page where I always make a mistake in this wizard and that is I forget to check find outline and if you get further on in the wizard and suddenly your image totally disappears use the back button to come back to this page because probably you've forgotten to check the find outline uh, uh, box. So basically what's happening here is the software is is trying to find where there is a difference um, between colors within that imagery um, and basically at the moment that is just a kind of a single thickness uh, a single pixel thickness but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to expand that maybe two or three times okay and again you can see that we've got sort of a nice clear linear version of our image there and then I'm going to click next so the monochrome threshold is basically where the software is beginning to try and uh, do that aspect of tracing for you. It's going to try and turn those differential lines into lines of uh, stitching. Um, now you can move the slider down if perhaps your image is uh, almost too dark. In this case yeah, I thought so. Um, it's actually not really going to make a lot of difference. But actually what we really want is to make sure that we've got some nice, clear, 
dark lines like's happening here i'm not going to worry that for instance the lines around um her mouth and her ears are slightly thicker than others that won't be a problem and just so that you know if you take it all the way you will get a completely black box okay but in this case around here that, that that's looking good to me i'm then going to click next this uh, screen is telling me how big do I want my um, uh, uh, my embroidery to be and we can go either fit to hoop or you can enter your design size I'm going to go fit to hoop but I might have to slightly adjust that because can you see I've got lines coming right up here to the edge and I'll explain why that might be an issue uh, um, uh, before we finish so I'm going to click next and this is the software trying to work that out and here we go so we've got a couple of ways that we could have this stitched out if we wanted to the default is a double trace so that will put down a marker line and then it will do a double uh, uh, stitch over that but if I wanted something much um, uh, a little bit stronger I could go for the quadruple tra uh, trace and at this point you're not going to see a, a, a difference you would do when it was actually stitched out but in today's case I'm actually going to choose the satin line trace and you can see from that we've actually got a really lovely looking uh, strong satin line on there if I felt that I needed to change my stitch options like the density or the thickness of line I can go in and do that but I'm really happy with this so I'm going to click finish now straight away um, the first thing that you'll notice is that actually we've got colors in here this isn't looking like a trace and that is because our original uh, image is actually here in the background so I'm going to go view and I'm just going to use the slider here just to pull that down and can you see that's actually dropped that background out we can't see it and that allows us to really see our embroidery really beautifully now one thing that you might find if you have um, a, a line a box around your imagery like I have here and you've gone for a satin stitch that it could be that that satin stitch is just slightly going over the edge the the, the boundaries of our hoop and it might be that it's actually making our embroidery too big to stitch out now one way to check on that is you can go home you can go modify block and can you see here it is saying in actual fact I've gone over by one and a half mil now I would actually suggest that's probably happened because this is a three mil satin stitch so one way to sort that out is I'm actually just going to click this down can you see we're under 200 mil and I'm going to click OK and that will then allow me to click on my life view and uh, if I want to kind of have a look at how my embroidery is looking in terms of those satin lines and you can see we've got it curving round uh, my pug's mouth here that's looking great if I wanted to I could uh, use the life view feature that I can actually uh, share the picture or like a showreel um, of that embroidery on my social media or with a potential client friends family there um, but so far we've got this embroidery but my embroidery here uh, my digitized embroidery that I've created here is now good for me to either use the send to my sonet features where I could send it to my cloud storage or my Wi-Fi enabled machine if I have one or alternatively I can go file and export my embroidery design onto a USB stick in all the main file formats so I hope you can see how easy it is to produce a trace embroidery using the uh, Express Design Wizard in the digitizing module that is within the MySonet embroidery software. If you found this a useful film, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can help you 
get started with digitizing using MySewNet embroidery software. Happy sewing!